Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby. The preps have been run, the points earned. In 12 days, 20 of the top three-year-old thoroughbred racehorses in the world will compete in Kentucky Derby 149. The anticipation continues to build on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show presented by Twin Spires. A chilly morning in the Ville, temperature in the upper 30s, but on the rise, the main track rated as fast, and we're going to bring you live action. The Kentucky Derby and Oaks horses on the racetrack just moments from now. Let's take a look at the headlines, and Todd Pletcher with a three-headed Kentucky Derby monster forte. Tapa Trice and Kings Barnes holding a strong hand. Practical move, Angel of Empire are streaking into Louisville off re recent graded stakes victories. Japan trying to win the Kentucky Derby for the first time, and they have their best shot yet potentially, and Derma. Soto Gake. And yesterday we had a withdrawal from Kentucky Derby consideration. Blazing Sevens is out. Jace's Road now moves up into the top 20. Joe, Christopher and Scott Shapiro joining you for the first of 10 consecutive Kentucky Derby morning workout shows. And Scott, a lot of the faces are the same. Todd Pletcher, Brad Cox, both holding strong hands once again this year. But uh, a new cast of characters, as always, as far as the horses go. Great to have you back in Kentucky. Great to be back. Nothing quite like the springtime lead up to the Kentucky Derby. I've been here for this now. My sixth Derby, I think you're on about nine. Nothing more exciting as we get closer and closer to the first Saturday in May. Hopefully we can bring you some information to help you make you, make you enjoy the Kentucky Derby a little more. No doubt about it. Uh, we've got horses with tremendous resumes. Some long shots like last year, like Rich Strike, who was our 80-1 to 1 winner. What will this year bring? We'll find out, as always, the first Saturday in May. Third member of our team standing by on the backstretch is Caitlin Free. Interviews, insight, and a whole lot more. Caitlin, good morning. Good morning, Joe and Scott. Really excited to be joining you guys. First day of the morning work show. Going to be my first time on here, and I'm really excited. But as you mentioned, got some long shots coming into this year's derby. We've got the Japanese Invaders. They're on the track right now. Trainers Brad Cox and Todd Pletcher. Got some heavy hands in this year's derby. Going to be talking to Todd in just a little while. So excited to see what this year's derby is going to bring in these morning works leading up. And we do have a worker this morning, Disarm, coming on at 7.30. We'll catch up with him him and first work back since that third in the grade three Lexington stakes that vaulted him in to the body of the 20 horse field pushed Jace's road out Jace's road now back in with the defection of blazing sevens yesterday so still plenty of time to shake up those point standings but that's where we are at the moment well, thanks, Caitlin. Only two horses in the history of the Kentucky Derby have won both the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and the Derby, Nyquist and Street Sense. This year's points leader, Forte, looks to add his name to that list. One Todd. of three Todd Pletcher runners on that first page. You guys talked about the strong hand Todd holds this year as he looks to get that third career Kentucky Derby victory. Definitely has a big shot as we move to the second page of the leaderboard. Three Brad Cox runners, three of his four hit show, verifying off the runner-up effort in the bluegrass. And Jace's Road, as Caitlin mentioned, getting in the body of the field going to provide some extra early speed and some horses on the outside looking in with the tweak of the point system 2019 was the only time he needed 40 points or more to get in this year skinner and cyclone mischief right now on the outside looking in with 45 points mandarin hero the other japanese horse who was second last out in the santa anita derby would also be a major player were he to get in. Now, if this were a game of three-handed poker, uh, Todd Pletcher might have three aces up his sleeve, and he's standing by whether Caitlin Free on the backstretch. Caitlin? 
Thanks, Joe. I am joined here by Todd Pletcher, Hall of Famer and two-time Kentucky Derby winning trainer. You've got the most starts ever for a trainer in the Derby. Is this kind of a year where you feel a little bit more confident bringing this group in than maybe some other years? Definitely seems like the strongest group we've brought in, you know, top to bottom. And, uh, you know, really pleased with the way the horses have settled in, the way they breezed over the track. So we're cautiously optimistic. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the three that you are bringing in. Let's go ahead and start with Forte, two-year-old champion. Race last out, won the grade one Florida Derby. He was a little washy in that race. Is that something to be concerned about leading up to kind of the excitement that comes with Derby Day, or is that just him? No, he got a little bit warm, but, I mean, it was a, it was a pretty hot day in South Florida. Spent a lot of time in the saddling enclosure, even more time on the walking ring, long time in the post parade. So he was on his toes. He was ready to go. Got a little warm, but I don't think it affected his performance. Definitely kind of more of that weather. And then, okay, let's go ahead and talk about Tapa Trice. Uh, he's kind of one that's a little bit slower out of the gate, just kind of finds his time to get into the rhythm of the race. But he seemed a lot quicker and a little bit better um, leading into the bluegrass, found his position a little bit earlier on, got out of the gate a little bit quicker. So is that kind of just something he has improved with with reps, or was it something that changed leading up to that race? No, I, I think definitely Louis focused on trying to get him into the flow of the race a little more. He hustled him away at the very beginning, and I, I thought that got him to a good spot going into the first turn and down the backside. So, you know, we'll try to do the same thing in this race. And then finally, Kings Barnes, the last one in that trio. Definitely the light, most lightly raced the group, going to be making his fourth start in this year's Derby. And with a little bit of that inexperience that comes, is there any concerns at all with him with all the people going to be in the crowd, or is he mentally fit and ready to go for the Derby? I tell you, he's been super professional so far. He was uh, in his debut, I thought, got a lot of seasoning. First start, he was behind horses, took some kickback without any problem, kind of had to push his way through traffic a little bit at the top of the stretch. So I think he has as much seasoning as you can have for only having three starts. But uh, so far, he's given us every indication he's very professional, and hopefully he'll handle the, the situation well. All right, Todd. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how they train leading up. And as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, guys, Todd Pletcher holding a strong hand leading into this year's Kentucky Derby headline by champion two-year-old Forte and followed by Tapatrice and Kings Barnes. Well, thanks, Caitlin. And she mentioned most starters ever in the history of the Kentucky Derby. And this will be the 20th consecutive year that he's been represented in the world's most famous race. And 62 tries, Scott. He's won it twice with Always Dreaming and Super Saver and has three major players this year. Always Dreaming and Super Saver made a lot of sense going into those races, but I think even if you asked Todd, he wouldn't say those were his two best coming into the race. Has a stronger hand probably this year, like he said, than ever. Both of them got the right trip and were peaking at the right time. We'll see if that can happen for his third Kentucky Derby a couple days from now. Forte has done very little wrong in his career. In fact, he only has one blemish, and that was a one-turn race. He is a perfect perfect six for six in two turn events and um, the winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile as I mentioned looking to join that exclusive list that includes a Nyquist and also Street Sense and uh, Forte means strength in Italian and his form is strong. Sure is like you said six wins six of seven the Florida Derby win the most recent one the Breeders' Cup Juvenile before it an extremely impressive effort in the Breeders' Futurity. You're going to see Forte uh, working here at Churchill Downs five furlongs and 102 flat and uh, this work is against Bright Future, who is a four-year-old, two for three lifetime, kind of sort of a little bit more of a one-turn type individual. Forte on the outside and uh, Bright Future on the inside. And I got a feeling Todd got exactly what he was hoping out of this work. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, what's most impressive other than the resume of Forte is he's shown he can win a dogfight. Did so in the Breeders' Futurity with a very well-meant Colton Loggins. Did so in the Florida Derby. Did not have things his way. It's going to be a short price, but does he have another move forward, and are you willing to swallow the likely chalk? Florida Derby uh, leads all preps with 24 winners, including Always Dreaming for Top Pletcher in 2017. Uh, Forte is by Violent Scott, a one-turn stallion, was a one-turn horse. If you would have told me, you know, 11 months ago after the dust had settled on Kentucky Derby 148 that this year's favorite would be by Violence, I would have told you you were crazy. But once horses prove what they can do, you can throw the pedigree out the window. Yeah, I totally agree. It was significant maybe at some point who his sire was. And people 
people might have questions still about the mile and a quarter, but I don't think the pedigree has much to do with it at this point. All right, let's take a look at uh, Tapa Trice, who certainly shouldn't have any issues with the distance based on what we've seen from him so far. Scott, the most expensive horse in the field, Tapa Trice by the All World Stallion Tapa. Doesn't quite have the resume of his stable made forte, but his is not so bad at all. Four for five in his career with notable wins, as you see in the Tampa Bay Derby, and then most recently a very strong rendition in the Bluegrass where he and Verifying ran to the wire. One, two, tap it, Trice. There you see him on the outside, Joe. We're going to see him on the outside in this half mile work. And Equivoque is the horse that's on the inside. He won his debut going seven furlongs in a very fast time. Again, Todd challenging tap it, Trice with a talented individual in his own right on the inside of him. Todd's got a lot of talented horses in the barn. He can pretty much match them up any way he wants. Always intriguing to see how these Hall of Fame trainers decide to work their horses before the biggest race and who they work with. Class, ability to get the distance and a desire to win, not a concern with Tappet Trice. But can he work out a forward trip, a forward enough trip under Luis Saez to get in position to run him down in the lane? Sire Tappet uh, is the number one active sire by grade one wins, but he's never won a Kentucky Derby. 33 of his yearlings have sold for over a million dollars. Uh, Tappet Trice, 1.3 million uh, as a yearling and uh, certainly looks like a major player in the Kentucky Derby. We're going to switch gears, Scott, from uh, one top trainer to another and Brad Cox, who seems like he's been on the Derby trail forever, but uh, actually only the last couple of years, but four live shots to fire this year. Obviously, Brad Brad, uh, you know, won some big races prior to his derby entrance, but it's very hard to believe he's only been in this race for two. This will be his third year. Hit show, one of the four horses that he has, Gary and Mary West. We remember maximum security, that disqualification. They're going to try to get into the Kentucky Derby winner's circle with the son of Candy Ride. See the damn actress? She won the 2017 Black Eyed Susan. This is a horse that didn't get the job done in the Wood Memorial, but did get the job done with a good trip in impressive fashion in the Withers. Take a look at Verifying. Verifying coming up off that runner-up performance in the Bluegrass. Last out by former Triple Crown winner, Justify. Yeah, this is a horse that really took a step forward in the Bluegrass. Showed some talent. Probably wasn't up to this level as a two-year-old. He's gotten better. Has tactical speed. Gets Tyler Gaffleone. Tough beat, Joe, in that Bluegrass. Hit show, tough beat in the Wood Memorial. You're going to see him on the inside here. He's a little bit headstrong. And on the outside, it is a verifying. And a hit show, one of four homebreds in the field. And interestingly enough, Scott, homebreds have won 11 of the last 19 editions of the Kentucky Derby. You see hit show on the inside, verifying on the outside. They're going to finish heads up here, five furlongs in a minute one. Both horses won on debut. Hit show at Keeneland, verifying at Saratoga. Verifying seems to be a horse that's probably going to get bet. 10, 10, 12, one range is coming into this race the right way. The career best effort in the Bluegrass. We'll talk about the pace of the race in the Kentucky Derby as we finalize the field and uh, as we move forward on the work shows. But Verifying likely to get a very good trip just off the early pace. Verifying the ninth fall out of a very productive dam is actually a half to the $3.9 million earner Midnight Bisu. The dam uh, won 8 of 17, 300,000, including the grade 3 Florida Oaks in her career. And Tyler Gaffleone, the perennial leading rider here at Churchill, although Louis Saez did win the title here in November. Tyler looking for his first Kentucky Derby. This will be his sixth starter. Last year rode White of Barrio to a 16th place finish. War of Will, a tough trip, seventh, his best finish in 2019. But I think, Joe, it's pretty safe to say that Tyler's got a Derby in his future. Jace's Road uh, should be a pace factor. He just drew into the field yesterday with a defection of Blazing Sevens. Uh, Brad Cox with the winner of the Gun Runner, the final two year old stake worth points on the road to the Kentucky Derby, uh, one at Fairgrounds in Louisiana. A key draw in. We talk about the pace. Jace's Road likely to be forward, sat just off the pace in the Louisiana Derby, which was won by Kings Barnes on the front end. I would expect an even more aggressive ride from Theron Giroux in the Derby. We talk about horses that maybe weren't cut out to be Kentucky Derby horses, at least based on their pedigree and sales price. Angel of Empire, just a $70,000 buy for Outboss Stables. They've been represented by several Kentucky Derby horses in recent years, but I'm not quite so certain that they thought this would be one of them. It's very interesting. Brad, with a lot of six-figure purchases, not this horse, the $70,000 Pennsylvania bred. Major development from two years old to three. He was awesome in the Arkansas Derby. If you would have asked Brad Cox in January where Angel of Empire ranked, 
in his list of uh, top three-year-olds, and he's got a lot of them this year. He probably would have said 12th. Might be his best one now. Maybe his best hope for the Kentucky Derby. Won a fall-apart race in the Risen Star, but I thought he showed an entirely new dimension in the Arkansas Derby, making the first move and running through the finish. Yeah, I like Tappet Trice being a little more forward. You don't want to be way out the back in an ideal world in the Kentucky Derby. Started to show signs of maturity in the Smarty Jones when he ran on late to get a piece, galloped out extremely well, really put it all together in his two most recent starts, the Risen Star and the aforementioned Arkansas Derby. Some very big prices on this runner in the Kentucky Derby future pools. Brad Cox, the Eclipse Award winning trainer of both 2020 and 2021, didn't start a horse in the Derby until 2021, finished first and third that year. The adjudicated winner, Mandaloon, when Medina Spirit <laughs> was eventually disqualified. Scotty had three runners last year, Tawny Port finishing the best of those, finishing seven. And Zozos and Cyberknife, the other one. Cyberknife really putting things together towards the tail end of his three-year-old campaign and the effort in the Pegasus. It didn't end his career the way Brad and his team would have hoped, but three solid runners. I think Brad's got a significantly better chance this year, though, than he did a year ago. We've got viewers from uh, different uh, social media platforms from all over the country, all over the world. Scott, we love doing this show, and at 7.30, we're going to get to see the Kentucky Derby and Oaks Horses live on the racetrack. Looking forward to that, but just want to thank everyone for joining us, and you have your opportunity to ask us some questions. Yeah, we love we love the interaction. Caitlin, you, you love answering the questions, and yeah, thanks for everybody that's joined us uh, in past years for rejoining us, and for those of you that are out there for the first time, thanks for joining us. Make sure you use that hashtag Tag KY Derby. Lots to come on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show. We've got some works to look back at for both the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks horses. And don't forget the live training session, 730 to 745 Eastern Time. We'll be right back. Race to Twin Spires and register with code GET200 to start earning your new player bonus of up to $200. Watch and bet on some of the world's best racing and check out our expert picks and weekly promotions. Twin Spires. Download the app now. Does your horse have the stomach to compete at this level? Your answer is likely yes. If your horse uses Reline GI. Reline GI is an all-natural supplement made with patented stomach-buffering HA that helps support your horse's gastric health. Plus, it's Clean Sport certified, so you know it's safe to use while racing. Learn more about Reline GI, because even a horse with the heart of a champion needs a healthy stomach to race at their peak. Kentucky Derby morning workout show. As you can see, uh, preparations uh, continue by the track maintenance crew to get the racetrack ready for the designated training time for the Oaks and Kentucky Derby horses, which comes up just about 12 minutes from now. Again, the temperatures in the upper 30s, but on the rise, the sun is shining. The main track is fast. A beautiful morning for training. The horses love the cool weather a little bit more than the humans do, and we're looking very forward to seeing those Derby and Oaks contenders just moments from now. Joe Christovec and Scott Shapiro and Scott, uh, the Derby contenders come from all over the country, and in this case, once again this year, with Japan being well represented all over the world, Southern California is certainly no exception. Without question, always Southern California almost always holds a strong hand. You mentioned the Japanese horse with Derma Sotogake leading the way. Practical move leading the way of the Southern California contingent. One of two in here for Tim Yachtin. You would have never thought that a couple of months ago. Uh, this horse lost the first four races of his career, Scott, has won three consecutive graded stakes races since. And interestingly enough, this horse was bred 
by trainer Chad Brown and the head of Plains Partners. But Tim Yachtin has had this horse from the beginning. He has. He got that big weight, as you see, in the Los Alamitos Futurity, which I question whether the number was true at Los Al. can be a little bit of a tricky track, but he backed it up with wins in the San Felipe and most recently the San Anita Derby, part of a three-horse blanket finish. Practical move as tactical speed. Ramon Vasquez will be the rider. This will be his second Kentucky Derby appearance. And it's interesting. He's on the inside of his workmate here. He goes pretty fast, 47 uh, seconds flat, Scott. This move was at Santa Anita back on April the 21st. And uh, this is another horse that does have natural speed. And Tim Yachtin has said it, and we've seen it in his races. This is a horse that does not mind being on the inside. Oh, he's proven that a couple times. Some would argue he's gotten perfect trips in the San Anita Derby and the San Felipe along the inside. But being able to relax in that position We'll see where he draws in the race, but it can't be a bad thing. You mentioned the tactical speed. Expect to see him kind of in that second tier under the aforementioned Ramon Vasquez. The OBS April two-year-old in training sale uh, starts tomorrow. This horse was purchased out of that sale last year for 230000 The last two-year-old sale purchased to win the Derby 2016 winner, Nyquist, who cost 400000 Face it tipped in in March. And again, you know, just doing things easily on the inside here is going fast, Scott but not looking like he's going fast, and that's normally what good horses do. Right, exactly, and he's rattled off three straight triple-digit Brisnet speed ratings in those three victories in Southern California. I think there's some concern how he'll do as we stretch out to a mile and a quarter, but he's got a really strong resume as he ships in from Southern California. Trainer Bill Mata won the Kentucky Derby a couple of years ago with a country house via the disqualification of maximum security. Rocket can, well, can he? I think he's probably going to have to take a significant step forward. That's not really earth-shattering news. He did have that notable win, as you see, in the Holy Bowl. I was surprised, Joe, that he went off as the favorite in the Arkansas Derby. He had a pretty good trip that day. It was a little bit underwhelming. Bill Mott will add the blinkers on Rocket Ken for the first time. Let's take a look at uh, Rocket Ken's work. Uh, just yesterday here at Churchill Downs, you can see him eager, wanting to do more. And, Scott, it's interesting to note, one of only three horses in this year's Kentucky Derby field to own a victory at Churchill downs joining two fills and confidence game that great he ran a couple of very good races here as a two-year-old so if you're looking for a move forward in a horse particularly uh, a horse at a price maybe rocket ken is the uh, one that we can look at i don't love adding the blinkers before the biggest race of his career but having an affinity for the things here at louisville certainly not a bad thing he started about six lengths behind this work made here. And as Scott mentioned, Blinker's going on for the first time in the Kentucky Derby. And Bill Mott has said this horse has a ton of talent. He just doesn't quite know exactly how to use it yet. So Bill believes the horse has some upside. Bill believes maybe the Blinkers will be the key to a improved performance here. And he's run well in all of his starts. Yeah, no, he's had some good efforts for sure. I think he definitely needs to prove that he belongs at the top of the crop, but he definitely belongs in the race. It'll be interesting with the equipment change, adding the Blinkers. He's kind of been prominent in some of his races without the Blinkers. Is he going to be a horse that we see show that new dimension of speed and maybe even run off with the Blinkers? That remains to be seen. You see Rocket Can for uh, Hall of Famer Bill Mott. And uh, Brad Cox isn't a Hall of Famer yet, but uh, he will be down the road. And he's got a couple of major players in the Kentucky Oaks in addition to the Kentucky Derby, Scott, including points leader Wet Paint. Wet Paint. A lot of, it took a little while for people to believe that Wet Paint was a legitimate Kentucky Oaks type favorite. Some of it by attrition, some of it by two really good efforts, but definitely proved that she belongs over a fast main track. After two wins off the pace over the off going at Oakland, she was very good in the grade three fantasy of three to five over the fast main track. Botanicals run on nothing but synthetics, but uh, she's been virtually unbeatable. And you see the second page there with some of the horses on the outside looking in, including Punch Bowl, who might be the best of the Brad Cox trainees. You see Malathat's little sister. Julia Shining, and then Hoosier Philly was all the talk when she was undefeated as a two-year-old, but has kind of stubbed her hoof in two starts this year. The Alice look, a Brad Cox runner that might get overlooked in the wagering wonder wheel, getting into the body of the field, the two-year-old champion Philly. Hasn't been quite as good as we had thought maybe as a three-year-old, but she will get her chance to redeem herself after an underwhelming effort last time out. All right, so again, if no matter uh, where you're watching us on any of the social media platforms, you have a question, you got an opinion, share it with us. Make sure you use that uh, hashtag KY Derby. We do have some questions coming in from all over the country and all over the world. And we're going to start with Muriel from New Brunswick, Canada. She's asking about the saddle cloths, why they have 
different colors, Scott. We've got the yellow for the Kentucky Derby and the pink for the Oaks. And if you're joining us for the first time, there's a designated training period. There's like 1,200 horses on the backstretch of Churchill. But for that 15-minute period, only the Oaks and Derby horses are allowed to go on the track, and the saddle towels helps us identify them. Exactly. We do appreciate the horsemen putting those saddle cloths on so uh, our identifiers can let us know which horses are which. We know what a lot of them look like, but it is a special time when those horses get over the track with no one else. You mentioned the large population of uh, equine flesh on that backside, Joe. Yeah, we got some more questions. Uh, Patricia from Tennessee is asking about the Derby point system. We've alluded to it several times. We've probably got uh, some viewers who aren't necessarily familiar with it. It was instituted in 2013. It's a way to get into the Kentucky Derby with prep races run all over the country and all over the world. It used to be based more on earnings. We saw some horses that maybe didn't belong entering the gate as three-year-olds that got a lot of those uh, earnings, had success as a two-year-old. Now, I think we've done a really good job here of getting the best horses in the field each year. The final preps uh, worth 100 points to the winner with some of the earlier preps, 50 to the winner, 20 to the winner, so the races get more important as we get closer to the dirt. Exactly. The last race is basically winning your in events, getting second, almost get you in, but you needed to do a little bit more work this year. Well, this is a familiar sight, Scott. Uh, these are the <laughs> Japanese horses in the shoot. Derma Sotogake, the winner of the UAE Derby, and Continuar, who was third in that race. And uh, we saw it last year. This is not a typical American training style. We've seen it from the Japanese in the past. And these horses are out on the racetrack uh, literally for about an hour or so every day. Yeah, they're outside of their barn for longer than an hour. There's been four Japanese horses that have tried the Derby going back to 1995. We spoke of uh, Crown Pride getting 13th last year. We got accustomed to see his unique training. Looking forward to seeing much more of the Japanese unique training regimen, at least to us, in the coming days. Yeah, a lot of people have uh, said that Dermo Setagake is the horse that has the best chance of all the previous Japanese runners. Won the UAE Derby in gate to wire fashion, but is stalked and pounced in some of his other races by the sprint sire, mind your biscuits, but has a ton of stamina on the damn side of the pedigree. And you're going to see a lot of Dermo Setagake over the course of the next 10 days. Twin Spires is the place to wager on the Kentucky Derby in any horse race that you might want to bet on for a lot of different reasons. It's safe. It's fun. It's easy to use. And it's got a lot of great promotions, including this one, the very popular money back promotion, Kentucky Derby Week, uh, right here at Churchill Downs uh, on the app and on the website. One of the go to promotions, of course, at Twin Spires. The customers are there at Twin Spires have shown a love for these promotions. Money back, you know what that means instead of the bet back? That means the money gets credited shortly after the race instead of at the beginning of the next week. So it'll be in your account very quickly. All right, we are inching closer, just about three minutes until the designated training time. We know who Billy Corrigan's pick is for this year's Kentucky Derby. It's the Saruman. We're going to see him work for Steve Asmussen after the break. More Oaks and Derby horses as well. Race to Twin Spires and register with code GET200 to start earning your new player bonus of up to $200. Watch and bet on some of the world's best racing and check out our expert picks and weekly promotions. Twin Spires, download the app now. Does your horse have the stomach to compete at this level? Your answer is likely yes, if your horse uses Reline GI. Reline GI is an all natural supplement made with patented stomach buffering HA that helps support your horse's gastric health. Plus, it's Clean Sport certified, so you know it's safe to use while racing. Learn more about Reline GI, because even a horse with the heart of a champion needs a healthy stomach to race at their peak. We are back on the Kentucky Derby Warning Workout Show presented by Twin Spires. A temperature, a 
been around 40 degrees. Main track is fast, and you see the Kentucky Derby horses have begun to move their way on the racetrack. You'll see them in the yellow saddle towels. You'll see the Oaks horses in the pink saddle towels. And uh, there is a picture for you. It's Forte, your Kentucky Derby favorite, most likely Scott. And uh, there's been some discussion as to what price people think he might be in a 20-horse field. I've heard people say five to two. I mean, I would fade him at that price. I, uh, last year's uh, favorite epicenter was four and a dime to one. So I'm thinking maybe closer to that. Well, he was made the five to two favorite in future wager pool six and was the three to one favorite in future wager pool five and he won the florida derby so i think that's some of the reason people think it i'm with you i'm thinking seven to two ish probably um he's the one to beat like you mentioned though as a horse player not only are we looking at who's the likeliest winner but more importantly at the windows we're looking at getting value as well and that's the question you have to ask is forte worthy of three to one seven to two yeah no doubt about it forte as we mentioned one of three for trainer Todd Platcher. And last year, Steve Asmussen looked like he was in position to win his first Kentucky Derby. Epicenter had the lead in the deep stretch. Looked like he made the winning move. But here comes the 80 to 1 shot, number 21. Luck number 21 at least for some people rich strike uh, to spoil the party this year steve's flying a little bit under the radar with disarm who barely gets into the field you know maybe the way fate works uh, maybe this is the year well he was run down last year as you mentioned by rich strike this year with his horse disarm he's likely to be doing the running i'm sure he wouldn't mind springing the upset with a horse that i know they've liked all along in that barn it hasn't gone maybe as planned absolutely but he's hit the board in four or five his foremost most recent starts, two uh, seconds, the second place effort against the flow of the race in the Louisiana Derby, and then getting into the field with that third place in the Lexington. When they ran second in the Louisiana Derby, I've never seen Steve so happy to run second in a race. They thought they were in with the 40 points, him and Joel. Turns out they had to run in the Lexington, run third, get just enough points to get in to the field. Not the way Steve would have wanted to get into the race, but again, the tweak of the point system did uh, definitely cause that uh, to happen where he had to run in that uh, next prep. And um, he's in the race and certainly pointed in the right direction. Here's Kings Barnes just moments ago. And, you know, good looking specimen. This is a horse that has a high cruising speed. He's never lost Scott. People are going to point to the fact that he did not run as a two-year-old, but he only has three races on the resume. But uh, same can be said for Justify, and he won the Triple Crown a few years right. ago. Right. He's not going to come in with the same fanfare as Justify. Has not been as fast. I think some figure uh, users would be questioned whether Kings Barnes has been fast enough, but he should have a no issue working out the right trip in here. He's got that tactical speed. We saw him use it to his advantage on the front end of the Louisiana Derby, but he relaxed kindly in his two starts in Florida prior to that first graded stakes win. And this is what you like to see, too. Uh, you know, Brandon Stauble, who's going to join us this weekend, talks about the ears and talks about a horse's energy, but at the same time, he's not trying to run off with the rider. He's still uh, well in control. Again, disarms work. Just moments away, we're going to go back to the champ forte. Forte, six of seven, four grade ones coming in, starting with the grade one hopeful over the offgoing at Saratoga last September. Then the Breeders' Futurity and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile getting him two-year-old of the year. Has won both of his starts this year. I would have liked to see a little bit more of a forward progression in terms of speed figures, but I think those that like Forte liked it. He overcame a little bit of adversity last time in the Florida Derby after getting a really good trip and dominating in the Fountain of Youth. Mike Rapoli, 0 for 7 in the Kentucky Derby at Mo Don last year who won the Belmont and then his nest was second in the Belmont. St. Elias Stables, a part of the partnership here, won for four in the Kentucky Derby. They won in 2017 with Always Dreaming. And I heard, you know, Mike with uh, Jonathan Kinchin on the In the Money podcast saying, I didn't want to go past 100000 for this horse. I'm glad I went to 110. I mean, with, we talked about Angel of Empire being the $70,000 purchase for the Brad Cox bar or getting, you know, turned out to be a Brad Cox runner with a lot of high price runners. The same is true of Todd Pletcher. He gets plenty of high six, high to middle six-figure horses. A bargain at 110 for this one. No doubt about it. And uh, this horse, again, showing good energy here. In the mornings, we'll see uh, 
the vast majority of these horses, including Forte, with their final works uh, this coming weekend. That's just kind of sort of tightening the screws with the vast majority of the heavy lifting already done. Horse who has a little bit more heavy lifting to do is Disarm. And uh, Scott, this horse, uh, making his first appearance on the work tab following that uh, run in the Lexington Stakes. Again, not the way Steve Asmussen would have planned getting Disarm here, but he's here. He's got a horse with upside. He's got a horse that should have no problem with the distance. Second, the Louisiana Derby to Kings Barnes, and he was the one behind that winner that was finishing at the end. Looks, I believe that's Joel Rosario, a born disarm here, who will ride him in the Kentucky Derby. Steve showing a ton of confidence in this horse, it, you know, Second place effort gone those short stretch one mile, the two turn race at Oakland Park to run him in the Louisiana Derby was a very telltale sign for me off just those three starts, none further than eight furlongs. And then in the Lexington, you know, I don't think the effort was really special, but maybe the plan was just to sit back, make sure they hit the board and then to have them fully cranked for the biggest race in North America, if not the world. I wish he had a dollar sign on his back because then we would know for sure that it was uh, Joel Rosario. We're not absolutely sure, but it certainly looks like him and uh, Disarm about to break off for his workout here. Very good looking son of gun runner. Winchell Thoroughbreds, homebred. Uh, they've always thought highly of this horse. He went off at 5-2 to two on debut here at Churchill. Then Broke his maiden at Saratoga by more than six lengths. You know, doesn't have a ton of experience, doesn't have the resume that many of his rivals do, but he should be finishing. He's got the right rider to come from off the pace in Joel. Joel won the Derby in 2013, the first year with the point system. Orb getting it done, second last year with Epicenter. And it's well documented that Steve Asmussen hasn't won a Derby yet, but he's won over 10,000 races in his career, the second most in the world, the only one in North America uh, to reach that goal is he is the uh, all-time leading trainer in the history of the sport and we keep saying it year after year it's just a matter of time before he gets his Kentucky Derby victory maybe disarm will be the horse as uh, this horse putting in uh a workout here this morning and an important one at that first since the Lexington. It's funny how it works. You know, Steve had epicenter last year, the likeliest winner, the favorite in the race. I would argue ran the best race, putting away Zandon. Didn't get the job done, but did have a tremendous three-year-old campaign. Now he's got a horse where the expectations aren't quite as high. He'll be coming from further off the pace, most likely. Maybe disarm, like you said, Joe, can get Steve that coveted first derby. And you see this with a lot of these horses working. You know, they'll have a target in their workmate. The workmate breaking off a little bit uh, ahead of disarm. Disarm slowly making up ground here on the outside under very little to no encouragement from jockey Joel Rosario. As you see, he's going to pretty much blow his work made away here with a little bit of the moving of the hands from Joel, but uh, not fully engaged into the bridle there. And he's going to gallop out well. And we'll get the times here from Kevin Kirstein again. Great follow on Twitter for all the uh, Derby and Oaks information at Horse Racing KK. We'll get the, that information coming in along with the final time. But Disarm with a with a strong gallop out as yeah, well. Yeah, solid gallop out, of course, I'm sure by design from his Hall of Fame trainer and most wins in North America. American racing history in Steve Asmussen and uh, Joel Rosario was aboard in that Louisiana Derby. It's the only time he's been aboard thus far and it was probably his best effort. Got a little bit of a higher number on the Brisnet scale in the Lexington grade three, but I think we would both agree the Louisiana Derby was more impressive. That was one minute flat according uh, to Kevin Kirstein. We'll get those splits. We'll get you more information on Disarm's work. Kevin also confirming that that is the dollar sign. Joel Rosario aboard Disarm. Uh, the only horse we expect to have a published workout this morning on the Kentucky Derby Morning Work Show. Now, yesterday, this guy drew into the field Jace's Road and expect him to be forward. He tried to go forward in the Louisiana Derby, and he was right behind Kings Barnes, but uh, Florent Giroux said after the race, you know, once I got to Kings Barnes, I wanted to go past him, but Kings Barnes had another gear and elected to sit second, but Jace's Road earning the points at that point that we thought would get him in, didn't quite get him in, but now he's in based on the defection of Blazing Sevens from yesterday. We'll be talking about the race shape, the amount of early speed signed on, and how the pace looks after a chaotic first half mile last year as the days go on and we get the full field for sure with some speed types to the outside. But I would expect Florent to be a little more aggressive this time out because stalking off the pace of Kings Barnes didn't work in the Louisiana Derby. This is a horse Joe like us. 
him and his connections going to be hoping that there is no rain, there's no off track. His two efforts over an off going, 48 lengths in defeat in those two starts. His four efforts over a fast main track, two wins and two thirds. We've got Hit Show for Brad Cox on the track. And then uh, behind him is Continuar, uh, one of the Japanese representatives, third last out in the UAE Derby behind UAE Derby behind Derma Sotogake. And uh, you're getting them both pictured here. Uh, Hit Show once again in the front and Continuar in the back. Well-bred uh, son of Candy Ride, the Gary and Mary West homebred. Manny Franco rode this horse to victory in both the Withers and then, uh, sorry, a, you know, Tough Nose defeat in the Wood Memorial. This horse is one that I have no concerns about the distance. My biggest concern is pretty simple, Joe. Is he good enough? Very good as a two-year-old to start his career. Hasn't really taken the steps forward I would have liked to see Verifying was uh, one of Brad Cox's most highly regarded two-year-olds last year, and it's taken him a little while maybe to get to the point to where Brad has wanted him to be, but a major excuse, I thought, in the Rebel. He kind of made a couple different moves that day. It was a very sloppy racetrack. It was won by a long shot and confidence game. I don't hold those kind of races against horses like this, particularly when they bounce back with a huge effort as he did in the Bluegrass. Yeah, they went fast that day, 22 and 346 confidence game on the outside, mid-pack, red route one from way out the back, and Verifying was just caught along the inside a little would have liked to have seen him run a little better but i'm with you very willing to toss tough defeat in the bluegrass running a career best triple digit brisnet speed rating run down by tapich rice i thought both of those runners ran huge that day in the lexington area and cemented themselves as legit contenders tyler gaffley on a rising star in this game won the 2019 preakness with war of will perennial leading rider here at churchill downs just 28 years old he's won over 2,000 races and his career earnings have gone up every year since he first started riding in 2014. He also rides pretty mischievous in the Kentucky Oaks. We'll talk about some of the Kentucky Oaks horses in the coming days, but uh, she's a major player. She sure is. And Tyler Gaffleone, a major player, not, not only here in Louisville and in Kentucky, but nationwide. Had the War of Will. Tough trip as his best finish in the Derby thus far. Verifying appears to be coming into this race in the right way. Should get a nice forward trip. And uh, like I said earlier, Tyler Gaffleone certainly should have a Kentucky Derby in his near future. Taking a look at the horses uh, training here for Kentucky Derby 149. Also the Oaks, and we talk about, you know, trainers with a shot to win both races. Brad Cox has won two of the last five Kentucky Oaks, Monomoy Girl, and She Dares the Devil. We talk about his strong hand in the Derby with horses like Verifying, Angel of Empire, etc. He's got Wet Paint, Botanical, the Alice Look in, in the Kentucky Oaks, Scott. A trainer winning the Derby and the Oaks in the same year has only happened three times. Ben Jones has done it, done it twice. Hasn't happened since way back in 1952. You remember that, right? Uh, just a few years before my time. <laughs> he definitely has a shot this year. I think it took a little while for uh, folks to believe that Wet Paint was a legitimate favorite type in the Kentucky Oaks. Some of it by attrition from her main rivals. Some of it because she'd won over and off going at Oaklawn. But she really was impressive in the grade three fantasy last time out, proving she can win over a racetrack without moisture in it. Again, there you see verifying we will ask that, uh, you know, you keep sending us in those questions for the last 15 minutes or so of the show as we're going to get to the, to several of them. So use that hashtag KY Derby. We've got the splits here for uh, Disarm as well as we take a look at uh, Pink Saddle Tall, a Kentucky Oak contender. We'll identify that horse momentarily, but the splits for Disarm, 13 and 1, 25 and 2, 36 and 3, 48 and 2. Minute flat is the published workout time for Disarm, uh, galloping out 113 and 1 and 126 and 3. And uh, was a length or two behind the stable mate. Uh, did win that workout pretty convincingly. Galloped out strongly, as we mentioned, as you take a look at the flying connection for Todd Fincher and uh, a contender for this year's Kentucky Oak. Should be involved in the early proceedings. The daughter of Nyquist will ship in from uh, Sunland where she rattled off two straight wins. Todd Fincher might not be a name you're familiar with, but he is a very capable conditioner. 26% over 151 starts this year. Positive ROI for those gambling guys. This will be a big step up, but uh, she should get some calls with that early zip. A fall out of this dam who was a 6 for 16, but was a sprinter 
in her career. So we'll see if Flying Connection can get the nine furlong distance. Dermasota Gake is a horse that a lot of people, both locally, nationally, internationally, are very interested in. Uh, this is him just moments ago, Scott. And uh, people talk about the UAE Derby. They've never produced a winner out of that race, but maybe this horse is a little different. Could be. I mean, I think it's a matter of time till ja the Japanese uh, hold, you know, get the job done or at least make a big run in the Kentucky Derby. We know they've won some Breeders' Cup races. They've won a lot of races across the globe. They're focusing more on the dirt racing. Derma Sotogake started the career like many on the circuit in Japan on the turf, but has moved over to the dirt and been very impressive that eye-popping wire-to-wire win against 12 rivals in the UAE Derby he comes into this and I think he's going to be probably the third choice in this race Joe it'll be interesting to see how he's bet for sure his UAE Derby time was a half second slower to the track record setting time that Mendelssohn uh, set several years earlier. Uh, UAE Derby, 18 starts from the representatives. Best finished Master of Hounds fifth way back in 2011. So, you know, has some history to overcome. But again, it's only history, Scott. We got to look at what's in front of us. Last year, Crown Prince, another Japanese runner, came in, finished 13th in that race. Um, Mendelssohn came in with 6-1. to one. Finished dead last in that race, but it went on to prove that he did belong here. I think Derma Sotogake, it's not really going out on a limb at this point, gives the Japanese his their best chance ever. And he's another one that doesn't need the lead, but should be forward. All right, again, we are wrapping up the designated training time, 7.30 to 7.45, and that's the time it is now. We still got some time on the Kentucky Derby Morning Workout Show. We're going to bring you some more action and answer some questions uh, via social media. Don't forget to use that hashtag, KY Derby. We're going to bring Caitlin Free back in. I'm going to uh, send it around the horn here from uh, Scott to Caitlin and back to me. We've got a question from... Let's see, Betty from Facebook, who asked, which of the three Todd Pletcher horses do you think has the best chance to win the race, Scott? And uh, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, I think you, Forte has the best chance to win the race, I would say, based on his resume. But from a gambling perspective and the price, I would say I would prefer the other two from a, from a gambling perspective. I think Tappet Trice has almost as good a chance, and Kings Barnes is no chopped liver. All three of those horses have a good chance to win. Uh, Forte has the best resume. You know, maybe Tappet Trice is a Belmont Stakes winner. We've seen Todd win that race often. To me, I think Kings Barnes is the best bet and the most likely winner because of that high cruising speed. He won going a mile and three sixteenths at Fairground Scott, the only North American prep to go that far. And that prep pretty much replicates the Kentucky Derby as good as any with the distance and the long stretch. O'Donagal winning the Belmont last year for Todd Pletcher. Similar style. Takes a little while to get rolling. But uh, yeah, Kings Barnes getting a little bit overlooked. No rider thus far but has a lot of tactical speed. Yeah, and that's an interesting question. I'm sure we'll talk about that and debate it uh, over the coming days until we do get a rider for Kings Barnes. But let's uh, ask Caitlin Free that same question. Uh, Forte, Tapatrice, and also uh, Kings Barnes. Did you get any sense from talking to Todd Pletcher on camera or off which one uh, he might like the best? I think he really honestly likes all three of them. I kind of asked for a little bit of an update on a rider for Kings Barnes. No update as of yet, so we will see when that does come out. Definitely going to kind of play into that, how I feel about Kings Barnes. But Kings Barnes is the one that I think I like the best, the most coming in at the moment. I think he's got the one with the most upside, as you said, does have that high cruising speed. Got a really free running style. Got a good look at that on the track. But as Scott mentioned, Forte, definitely the best resume. Tapatrice, no slouch either, but... <laughs> Wow, to hold those three horses coming into a race that's pretty wide open, just crazy. Well, thanks, Caitlin. And, uh, you know, we'll find out more about a rider for Kings Barnes as we get closer to the draw for the Oaks and the Derby, which is one week from today. We're going to relive this work from Disarm for trainer Steve Asmus and with the dollar sign, Joel Rosario up again, breaking about a length or two behind the stable mate here and going a minute flat. You're going to see this horse cruise through 13 and 1, 25 and 2, 36 and 3, 48 and 2, a minute flat, and then the big gallop out. And again, those that are connoisseurs of workouts, are, I'm guessing, are going to like this move. I would think so as well. You see, relax very nicely there. He's going to need to relax kindly in the Derby. Won't very likely to be not that close to the early pace, depending on how fast they go, of course. But uh, very good-looking son of Gunrunner. Well-bred, well-meant. Uh, 
has a step forward in him, Joe. He might need two, though, to beat this field. He was third in his debut at Churchill. Then he went to Saratoga and broke his maiden by six open lengths going seven furlongs, but didn't resurface until February the 19th that we're playing catch-up with him. Ran second in an allowance race, two Eagles River going gate to wire that day, then second in the Louisiana Derby, third in the Lexington, just his sixth career start. You mentioned the pedigree, you mentioned the connections, and certainly has the look of a horse that'll get a mile and a quarter what kind of price are we looking at 20 to 1 I think so 20 to 1 at least you know I mean it depends how the you know the buzz that some of these horses create you know you're going to look at the Lexington grade 3 and see that this horse was pretty well beaten third that day it was a good trip a little bit of uh, congestion at some points a little bit of traffic but don't hold that third against them first mission who won that race and Arabian Lion both ran very well first mission looking to uh, point to the Preakness at this point, it sounds like, for Brad Cox and his team. And if he was in this race, he wouldn't be without a shot. So don't hold that race against him overly too much finishing third. We're going to take a look at a work uh, from earlier this week. Actually, from last week. It's uh, April 20th, to be exact. It's Ray's Kane. Trainer Ben Colbrook represented in the Kentucky Derby for the first time. The Sire Violence uh, has the Kentucky Derby favorite, also has Ray's Kane. And this one's kind of a deep out the back closer. He won his prep, Scott, the Gotham in the mud, won it going away. And I thought he ran decently in the bluegrass, but no better than fifth. Yeah, no better than fifth was no match for the top two, Tappet, Trice, and Verifying. Getting into the field, as you mentioned, in the win in the Gotham, he dominated that field, got a good setup that day at 23 to 1, but the Thing is, that race was at one turn, was over and off track, and he got a hot early pace. He might get an honest pace, but this is at two turns, and we hope it's over a fast main track. Trainer Ben Colbrook, best known for training the very talented sprinter Limousine Liberal. He's won 10 graded stakes races in his career, but no Triple Crown or Breeders' Cup uh, victories. Uh, this one is owned by Spendthrift Farm, and uh, they're also the owner of King's Barns. A race cane, the sixth foal out of this dam, and uh, the dam... One for four in the career, but I have to unrival Bell, who earned $1.8 million in her career. This is a deep out-the-back closer that's going to look to pick up as many pieces as he can. Seven races in his, in his career, two wins. Both of those wins were dominant. So when he's won, he's won handily, including that easy maiden breaking performance at Keeneland. He's going to have to really take a step forward here. I have a little bit of concerns about the distance, about his running style. He's probably going to be one of the least likely winners in the race. But uh, Ben Colbrook, as you mentioned, first try here in the Derby, Kentucky native. And you look at the time and you see 103 and two fifths versus the minute that Disarm put up. He's not a fast workhorse. He's a deep out the back closer, and he really wasn't asked for much in that drill. As we take a look at his baseball card earnings of just under three hundred thousand dollars, and Scott, a horse like this for a trainer and connections uh, like this. You know, to get him in the Kentucky Derby is a victory in of itself. They're going to enjoy the atmosphere and the environment, and they should be congratulated for getting here. And as we saw last year, anything can happen. Without question, Ray's Kane for Ben Colbrook. The other violence in this race, $110,000 purchase in Forte. This one a little bit more, $180,000 Colt uh, for Ben Colbrook, uh, bred by Rockridge Thoroughbreds. Javier Castellano, the veteran, has not been aboard this horse thus far. He will get them out in the Derby. Came into the studio today and Scott uh, was talking about some horses that uh, he thinks might be flying under the radar that he thinks are usable in the trifecta and the superfecta. And one of those is, and you made me guess and I didn't get it right, Lord Miles Scott. Tell us why. Well, I mean, this is a horse that's certainly bred to get more distance. He's uh, well-bred being by Curlin out of an unraced mare that was a half-sister to 2017 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies winner Caledonia Road. Without question, he needs to take another step forward, but the distance shouldn't be an issue. He's going to get completely overlooked. I think the Wood Memorial kind of uh, people considering it one of the lesser preps this year, three-horse blanket finish there that he got the bob in at a big price. He just has the look potentially of a horse that could save ground, and if the pace is more contentious then maybe it looks on paper, can just grind away a minor share. We've seen long shots hit the board before. I don't think Lord Miles would be the most shocking. Or blinkers one time in the Holy Bull, didn't have the greatest of starts behind Tappa Trice and the Tampa 
Bay Derby. Won this race, Scott, at 59-1. to And there you see him on the outside uh, in this work. And he's by Curlin. He's certainly got the pedigree, one of uh, a handful of homebreds in this race. And uh, you're looking for these kinds of horses when you're betting the Kentucky Derby that are out, going to outperform their odds. I know that our opinions are going to change over the course of uh, the next 10 days or so. More than a couple of times, but this one is on your radar as a potential one. Yeah, underneath only. Safi Joseph Jr. has had two Kentucky Derby starters. This will be his third. Neither have hit the board. New York traffic and White Barrio. There you see it. Twinspires.com. If you need a wagering account, it's the official betting partner of the Kentucky Derby. And, uh, Scott, one of the great aspects of Twin Spires is the ability to share your bet with your friends. We're going to talk a lot about wagering during the course of this show. There are all kinds of different bets you can make, from super effectives to pick fives. Sometimes they're a little bit too expensive. You need some investors, so to speak, or you just want to have fun with your friends. This is a great way to do it. You can use it a lot of different ways. We use it uh, over the course of time and share them, but other people can create their own as well and share them on social media if you don't have enough friends to buy into it. You know, we've seen a couple of big pick six carryovers down the road in Keeneland. Great opportunities when you want to get a little more bang for your buck to share with your friends, like the uh, graphic there says. All right. Let's uh, take a few social media questions. And I've got one that seems to pop up every year. It's from Daniel in Kentucky. How many gray horses have won the Kentucky Derby? And you know what, Scott? Thanks to the great media guide information that Darren Rogers and Kevin Kirstein provide, I'm able to give you that answer. Since Good. 1930, gray roan host, uh, horses have won the Kentucky Derby eight times. And I hate to put you on the spot. Maybe I'm going to bring Caitlin in too. Can either of you guys tell me any of the most recent gray or roan horses? Silver Charm. To win the Derby, that's one, Caitlin. Uh, Giacomo. Giacomo was the most recent in 2005. Monarcos winning colors. Gato del Sol, spectacular bid, decidedly and determine. Who are the gray horses in this race? Well, they're Tapa Trice, Reincarnate, and maybe King Russell were he to get in off the also eligible. King Russell would be a big price for those backing gray horses. Interesting information. Thanks, as always, to the media team, Darren Rogers and Kevin Kirstein, that put us in good positions to give that kind of info. There's Continue R, and uh, this gives us an opportunity uh, to – Reach out to Caitlin again on the backstretch. And Caitlin, you are a connoisseur of international racing. We've talked about the Japanese and how powerful they've been. You know, worldwide in recent years, they really seem to know what horses to send where. Talking about Breeders' Cups, talking about sending horses to the Dubai Carnival. And now the Kentucky Derby. You see Continuar there, Dermo Sadagake, uh, as well as Mandarin Hero, potentially, if he draws in off the AE list. Just tell us a little bit about, about your overall assessments of the Japanese and how they continue to get stronger in races like this as the years go on. I think it's something that really people have alluded to thinking that this is something new with the Japanese types of horses, but they've been breeding horses to be this good. And I think this is just really the first few years that they're kind of wanting to branch out and try this overseas stuff. It's been well within reach for a long time based off that breeding and how they train horses. Continue R, I think, is one that's going to maybe fly, on, fly under the radar a little bit. Trainer Yoshido Yahagi has <laughs> really excelled with this overseas type of stuff. He had those two Breeders' Cup winners, Loves Only You and the Philly and Mare Turf, and the shocking winner, Marshall Lorraine and the Breeders' Cup just staff defeated one of the best ever fields assembled in the dust staff she was about 50 to 1 I think she was 49 to 1 on the line and then of course he had Pantalassa overturn the U.S. horses in the Saudi Cup this year so Yoshida Yahagi not one to overlook in these international races so Continuar definitely has some upside especially underneath Derma Sadagake obviously the big player in Mandarin Hero really impressive in the Santa Anita Derby and I would say as you guys have already mentioned this is by far the best horses that they've brought in and they've got two and potentially three. Well, I don't know about you, Scott, but uh, you ask Caitlin about Japanese or international horses, and she kind of puffs up, and then she just runs wild. That was uh, something I was taking notes. I was but, taking uh, notes. 
Food, I... no doubt. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap up the first morning work show. We got to see a lot of great stuff today. I thought the Pletcher Trio uh, looked very good on the racetrack, uh, Scott. But uh, one down, nine more to go on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show. Uh, your final thought, anything you took from today? Well, it'll be interesting to hear what Hall of Famer Steve Asmussen has to say. To our, my eye, it seems like yours as well. This arm doing probably what he wanted to do, so that's what stands out. But we're just getting started here. We've got a lot of buildup. We'll have a lot of works as we get closer to the end of the week. We've got guests. we got Rosie Napravnik, Jay. James Scully, Travis Stone, Brandon Staubel. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're just getting started. Yeah, we're just getting started. And uh, there'll be some changes probably over the course of the next nine days with horses dropping out, horses jumping in, and some arrivals from California, two fills in Chicago. Every day there's going to be a little something different, a little something new to bring you on the Kentucky Derby morning work show. Caitlin Free on the backstretch, a little bit colder than us this morning, Caitlin, but you're smiling. The sun is shining. Uh, what did you take from uh, your discussion with Todd Pletcher of what you've seen today? I've seen a lot of good things here on the track. A little bit of a quiet morning. As you said, this is just kind of the calm before the storm. Things are going to get a little bit more pumped up as we inch closer and closer to the Derby in the Oaks. But very nice to talk to Todd Pletcher this morning. Seems really confident with the group that he does have leading into this race. Great to see them on the track this morning. All three made great impressions on their gallops and on their uh, kind of jogs, so to speak. They all have got really nice running styles and look really, really good on track. And Todd seems really confident he has to be happy with what he has and I really do think he is well thanks Caitlin obviously a minute flat workout from Disarm a big gallop out he was my choice in the Louisiana Derby I wound up finishing second buying an impressive winner in Kings Barnes that's the big take from today yeah and you got some future wager options as well with Disarm so I know why uh, if, if given the chance you'll be rooting with Joel in the lane that's going to wrap it up for the first of 10 consecutive Kentucky Derby morning workout shows. Don't forget you can join us again tomorrow, Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks Horses Live. And a whole lot more on the Kentucky Derby morning workout show presented by Twin Spires. Enjoy your Monday.